Okay, well, I'm out and about this morning and I'm going to my local farm shop to pick up some steak for Make It Meat Monday. So I'm actually heading to Torta Farm Shop, which is only about three miles from my house. And we're gonna go and have a chat with Simon Ball, who runs the place. And I'm gonna ask him some questions because I think it's quite interesting to go and see a farm shop um, not only to see the stuff they stock, you know, the local produce they sell, but also this is an opportunity for some people to maybe have their first experience for, for, of a farm shop because obviously if you live in a big city and stuff, you haven't necessarily got one down the road. Um, and also it's, it's something that maybe you drive by a farm shop and you're never quite sure what that's all about. So this is an opportunity, I thought, to speak to Simon, find out how it's set up, how they run it, maybe about how COVID's impacted on their business. Uh, so right, let's get going. We're heading to talk with, we're gonna get some fantastic steaks for Making Meat Monday, and we're gonna meet Simon Ball. Okay, let's crack on. I'm here, I'm at Talkworth Shop. It's just behind me, Talkworth Farm Shop. It's beautiful. Look, I, I, I'm gonna spin round. Look at this view across there. That's the view from the cafe. Look, I'm just gonna film it. We have a look. Actually, Farmer P, his farm, you know my mate Farmer P, he is just down there. So we can see Nibley Monument there. Oh, my front camera doesn't want to focus very well. He's just down below there. That is a cracking place for a walk, by the way. So the cafe, which isn't open at the moment, is just here. Look at that for a spot for a cup of tea. Um, I think they're open for takeaways at the moment. Anyway, right, I'm going to walk in and see Simon. Well, what I'll do is I'll get him to come outside, I think, because then I can interview him without a mask on. I've got mine ready. Um, and then what we're going to do, hopefully, is have a little walk around inside the shop and have a look at what he's got for sale, um, different bits and pieces, because this is a great chance. Look, this is a great chance to see inside a proper, really good farm shop. And also a proper farm shop that's not created by someone just because, hey, let's have a farm shop. It is someone who's got a family farm, or works with a family farm and they've found a way of selling their own produce and stuff which is I think admirable right let's have a look I'll go and find Simon and we'll have a chat okay so I'm here with Simon Ball this is are you am I right in saying you're the founder of this shop or I part set of this it? business out back in 2003 yes I 2003 did. Yeah. right so Simon I'm gonna go straight in and set, tell me how did you set a farm shop up because that's quite a commitment it was. Well, I was working out in hospitality industry, which I'm very glad I'm not working in currently. Mm. Um, I'm one of three sons. Uh, my parents were on a tenanted farm. It was never going to be handed down to us. Um, we had to go and find our own way. Um, so I went off and I worked in pubs and bars and restaurants. I did a bit of landscaping, this, that and the rest of it. And we were at the point, or dad was at the point with his farm, that he needed to diversify. He needed to, we decided we needed to direct market our own beef um, and sell it direct to the public. Um, it was award winning, winning beef. Um, he was regularly winning uh, prizes for his live cattle, stood out in the field. Um, and when we went to shows and things, we won prizes. Um, but the beef itself was going over to Merthyr Tidville, really? uh, into the abattoir, and was on Tesco's shelves within 24 hours. Right. And it wasn't really doing it any justification, really. So we decided that we would set up Tortworth Estate Farm Shop, mm. and that I would, or I did, and that I would have a go at marketing our own beef. Um, mm. Lots of different options. We could have gone to farmers markets. Uh, we could have done the box scheme. Um, in the end, we decided we wanted to have a farm shop. Uh, I love local food, I love food, I'm a real foodie. Um, what I wanted to do was have a premise uh, where I could bring other local producers in and sell their wares and support them. And for any other members of my family, have a marketplace to sell any of their produce. Um, and hence why we set up Tour with Estate Shop. <clears throat> so it's quite a brave move, isn't it? Because you know, if you do a market stall or something, your costs aren't that big, are they? And you can try and see if you sell it and you've only got that stall. If it doesn't work, go back to selling in Murphy Tidville. So you, to set this up here, that is a, a, a massive financial commitment and quite a risk, isn't it? Were you, were you nervous? Or, I mean, confident or, or just mad and <laughs> gung-ho? <laughs> I'm sure it was very well um, researched it, it business It was a plan. risk. We did have to borrow some money initially uh, to, to pay for the equipment uh, and that, but this is a rented premises. Mm. Um, 
off of the Tortworth estate locally. Hmm. Um, it wasn't like it looked now. A lot of money was spent on the building in the first instance. What was here before then? It was just a, the, a brownfield well, site, was, was it? Or? Atkos farm building right. here, and it used to be a uh, milking parlour belonging really? to the neighbouring house, this very small dairy yeah. farm of about 15 cows. Right. Um, and so the building was here already. Mm. Um, but this building and this site is just off of the main road and is a lot more accessible than the family farm, which is down quite yeah. a dirty farm. Lake. I mean, it's a cracking location. You've got, yeah. the, you've got the view across there to Nibley Monument. Yeah. You've got easy access to the motorway junction. Is it junction 14 of the M5, isn't it? It's junction M 14 of the M5 and just down the next uh, junction is the M4. And mm. we sort of class ourselves as a bit of a corner shop yeah. um, within that space. Um, and yes, we are, we're not in walking distance. You have to drive mm. to us. Um, so that was always a big concern. Were, were people gonna actually come our way? Um, but if you've got a quality product in the first place, yeah. and I always stand by this, if you've got a quality product and you're very honest about how you produce mm. and rear uh, your animals and the welfare of animals, um, and you can get that across to your customers, then gradually you will build a good strong loyal customer base um, and I've always wanted to champion British farming. Mm. Being a little bit customer facing having worked in hospitality yeah. I felt I was in the right position to talk over a counter and explain everything about animals, welfare, how it's reared, I spent many years in young farmers stock judging and things like that so sort of know my way around the animals and then mm. now to be able to butcher it, learn the skills of butchery and sell it direct uh, it's so an absolute joy to do. In the, the range of products, how, how would you say this compares to a supermarket? Could someone come and get their, their entire shop for a week here, or is it a case of coming here for specific things that you can't find anywhere else? Because obviously, quite often there's a quite a difference in price for here, but is it about price? Is it about um, quality of food? What is it that people come here for? Um, people come here for the quality of food, certainly, and I like to think the service as well. Um, we have tried to uh, stock our shop with anything you would like to find in your larder at home. Uh, all of the key ingredients from herbs and spices, uh, cooking sauces, breads, milk, jam, chutney, the full works, mm. we've got a lot. Most of which are from local suppliers. Um, the trouble with sourcing from local suppliers is they're only producing one or two items, so you've got to get lots of local suppliers to fill your shop. Um, it's a lot of work juggling a shop, isn't it? It is, it is a lot of work. A lot of things dealing to think with of. Lots of, lots of different uh, suppliers and lots of invoices. So, whereas a lot of shops might trade with one or two main wholesalers and get most things uh, delivered in bulk, we are working lots of individual suppliers, lots mm. of deliveries, lots of invoices, um, but lots of great relationships with our local suppliers. So, uh, we, we know who's producing the milk, who's producing the cheese, who's producing the butter and things like that. And those people can come here on our open days when we take part in open farms. Yeah, I love that. I've been part of that. And meet the customers really and things like that. And we really want it to feel like a community shop. So local people employed, we're supporting the local schools by sponsoring different things, um, supporting local agricultural societies and young farmers, offering up our premises for talks and mm. demonstrations and cutting and stuff like that. Um, and so, yeah, 17 years now, we're well rooted in. Um, and every year it's got busier and busier, which is fantastic. fantastic. And really built by word of mouth. Brilliant, so. yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll, if you, it's okay with you, we'll go and have a little look inside. Perhaps you could just give us a little tiny tour. We'll mask up, ready yep. for yep. it. And I'll also ask you at the end of it, when, how, how, it's, how COVID has affected you and how the business has managed to see through this quite a difficult time and how you've been part of the community supporting people yeah, and that. Yeah, Brilliant. Yeah, Thank you, in. Simon. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, I'm masked up. Simon's masked up. We are going to have a little look around this really good store. I, I'm seeing loads of stuff behind me. I'm thinking, oh, that looks good. I love that. Right, anyway, turning around to Simon. Here we go. Can okay. you give us a little tour of what's I in here can. and talk us through? I hope you can hear me with my mask. Yeah. Um, so we'll just walk around the shop and mm. point out a few things. Perhaps we'll start with this stand here. Shop um, local, look, here we are. Shop Straight local, to the point. Yeah. highlighting a few local products What have here. we got here? Is this um, all, how, are these all Gloucestershire or? So this is a lady up at North Nibley. She's got a bed and breakfast. Oh, wow. Uh, and her uh, she makes customers her recommended that she bagged and sold her granola that she baked fresh really? for them. Really? So that's what this is. This so is she started making her own. Super quality, really high quality, luxury granola. Yeah. Uh, a few different flavours there. Um, 
I know these people. And then just two fields over the back here, and a member of our staff as well. Um, I went by his sheep on the way here, and he, oh, bottled, he bottled some um, apple juice for us. Yeah, Ian, yeah, Ian. and Tanya. Yeah, fantastic. And, uh, really lovely Hester people. Works in the shop for wow, us. really? And so they're only two fields away, and yeah. it's lovely to talk to the customers. Fantastic. Our small farm. Um, single variety uh, apple juices. Yeah. Um, absolutely beautiful. Um, they bottled really some apple juice for us this yeah. summer. Yeah. Local honey. Local honey. Again, only three fields away. Cowshit Lane. Well, that's it. I've driven by Cowshit Lane to get here. Yeah. This is all. Yeah. You couldn't get much more local yeah. than that, could you? Uh, we produce some of our own items here. Yeah. So we make some conserves and right. preserves. And then Frampton on Seven, Jackie's Country. Oh, I love it. You, so, well, well, you uh, know when you know when they say local sometimes, and you look at it and you think, hang on, that's 25 miles away. Yeah. This is all stuff just down the road from me. <laughs> really yeah. low, proper yes. local. We've got tea blended in Wootton and soap, Slimbridge soap made just at Goodness the me, I, I could be here all day filming all this stuff. Look at this. <laughs> it's such a lovely... I think, sorry. Sorry, I think what I like about it is that it's stuff that you're not going to find anywhere else, is it? You know, you, you can go a long way to find all these things. They're really unusual, aren't They're they? They're not what I call big brand products. No, uh, they are I've never seen these in Tesco's. Um, but we Beef try stock. to offer a full range of uh, accompaniments for meat and yeah. vegetables, basically. And, and also to fill a basket, if people are going to drive to us, then we don't want them then to have to drive to Tesco straight That's out. That's a very good point, yeah. Um, and so we try to offer a full range um, and highlight small producers and speciality Wow, producers. look at this stuff. It's Abby Tom's. Never seen that before. Yeah. Um, so this is uh, produced uh, in Gloucester. Do you, do you come in here at night and think, oh, what am I taking over for my tea tonight? Well, and I'll have some of that. It's usually the things coming out of date. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, and these and this. So this is some of your frozen, so frozen we carry section. a bit of frozen yeah. stuff, but we really try to pride ourselves on all, having all fresh, fresh meat. Right. Um, inevitably, we've just come out of Christmas. We've got a little mm. bit of surplus stock and some items that we've added value to. We make our own Kievs and burgers right. and sausages. Okay. Um, so we'll just weave our way through. Mm. Can't pass this without mentioning my mum. Oh, you, Wendy's Farmhouse Cakes. Does she make these? She makes all the cakes. Your mum makes the yeah. cakes. And so oh. she's had this business How wonderful. for about 30 years now. And so. Hello, Simon's mum. <laughs> Fantastic making the cakes in his shop. How good is that? Um, and you might recognise things like Tyrrell's Chris from like yeah. caricature. Yeah. Um, Sunrise Foods, uh, of course, we've got Marshfield ice, ice cream. cream, that's just out the road in near Bath, isn't it? Yeah, all nice and local. Local eggs, Nate Farm from Oldbury, oh, Sherston, yeah. eggs from Sherston. Oldbury um, eggs. We have Hobbs House Bakery, Cottage right. Bakery, a few local bakeries, local beer producers, and what have you. Um, and we try to offer oh, a full range of this. dairy, meat, vegetables. You've got a Bath blue cheese, wow. Yes. That's like a, is that a soft cheese is it? Or a... uh, no, it's, it's a firm cheese. Oh, um, really? Look at that. Best, best for that. Don't um, think I've seen that before. Yeah, that's lovely. That's really lovely actually. Mm. And over here in around the corner we have more value added products. Right. Um, so you've got a lot of pies here. Bit so of a pie man of, myself. Are yeah. they, are they, do you make these yourself? So we make all of these here at the back. Really? Uh, using our own steak, local ale, yeah. simple ingredients, uh, just seasoning, yeah. a little bit of thickness sometimes, may, may contain flour, but not always. Yeah. We make a range of large pies and smaller pies. These are really easy to cook. You literally put them in the I've oven. I've had them. 45 I've minutes, had them. done. Get them from different yeah. village shop. Yeah. Um, wow, and, and you've got shepherd's pies. Shepherd's pie, compliments. Wow. So it's quite, I mean, I, I am really impressed actually, not just saying that, the fact that you, a, a significant amount of it is actually made by you, isn't it? Yes. Move away from those fridges, they're a bit noisy. Yeah. Uh, so we probably produce over 300 lines now. Of really? Jams, chutneys, condiments, pies, uh, morning goods like scotch eggs, sausage rolls. Um, yeah. And, and, and was that something that you intended to do right from the start, or is that something just grown organically as you, as you went? It has grown as demand has required it, mm. but actually, in a good business sense, it's it's us utilising our product and turning it over quicker. Yeah. As well as adding value to it, um, it re it means if we can utilise the meat off of our counter, we can keep premium fresh meat on the counter, yeah. and then 
as opposed to wasting anything, um, we are utilizing it before it gets to that point of spoilage or anything like that. Yeah. Um, and, and quite often that produces value-added food, which makes us a bit more money, but it's, it's convenient quite mm. often. And, mm. and that's what we were lacking in here, was something quick and easy, generally for midweeks. Yeah, of course, um, you know. I'm, most people come up Saturday I to totally buy understand that. But it's not always time. Grab, exactly. If they could grab a pie, stick in the oven straight away, then that's tea sorted for that night as well. Absolutely. Um, so, um, where do you see this going in five years' time? Um, this is at a point now um, where it's, it's chugging along quite nicely. Mm. Um, we're always looking to improve our efficiencies. We're always looking for new suppliers, bringing them on board and highlight those. Um, what I would like to see now that we're 17 years on um, is a bit more investment, put a bit of investment into the shop, bring it up to the standard mm. that the customers expect mm. nowadays. Um, yeah. For the feel of the shopping experience they're yeah. looking for, really. Right. Um, it's always we're competitive. not looking to radically expand. In 2012, we added on the cafe, yeah. which unfortunately mm. has been out of service for the last year. Um, but that, again, is another way of adding value and, for, and an opportunity for people to come and sit and enjoy yeah. the outside That's a lovely space. cafe. I'm yeah. not just saying that. I've been in there with my family, and it's a lovely... Thank looking you. across that view is just... You know, what that's worth a fortune, just that view, isn't it, in many ways, you know? And that gives us, the customers, an opportunity to try before they buy. Yeah. So they can try some of our meats in yeah. the casseroles and stews that the chefs are cooking, um, the faggots that we're serving up and all those sorts of things. Um, as yeah. I say, unfortunately, due to the COVID, um, it hasn't been serving as it was in previous years, but we have been offering a takeaway. Uh, service instead. Yeah, I was going to say, we're, we're, we'll have a look at the meat. I'm going to, I'm going to get that from, from my steak in a minute. Just finally, really, summing up then. So, how has COVID affected your business? Because it's a significant impact on many businesses. Did it cause a real problem at the start? And have you, how have you coped? Um, it was very much a worry, as it was with everybody. Um, the beauty of being an independent business is we're able to adjust mm. quite quickly. And so, we put our heads together and within a matter of nights, we decided the plan for the rest of 2020. And we pretty much stuck to that plan all the way through. And that plan for us was to, to have an order and collection service where people can phone up or email their orders and then they can just pull up in their car. We yeah. would have taken their payment over the phone and we will take their shopping out to the boot of their car. Right. For us, that was the safest way we could keep our customers um, from harm and and it's worked really well so we've we've had a very busy year in 2020 mm. doing the order and collect service we have been open for people to come in on a limited basis yeah and as I mentioned the cafe has been closed so yeah. that's one area of the business that lost its trade um, but the order and collect system replaced that and we also created a lot of hampers and food parcels uh, through the end of last year and through the Christmas period so that people could come and buy a local food yeah. parcel and send it to their friend um, or, or buy a hamper as a gift and give it out and, at Christmas. And how have you found trade generally over that period of time? Have you managed to keep going okay? Has it gone up? We Has have. It gone down? Um, we have and others within our industry like farm shops have all reported the same, that they've been able to adapt quite quickly and they have seen huge um, increase in trade. Oh, and as good. such, we've had our busiest year. Have you? 2020 was our busiest year to date. Oh, and uh, the Christmas we've just had uh, was our busiest Christmas. Do you think um, that's because, why do you think that is? Do you think that's because people decide they don't want to go very far for the shopping or are they prepared to buy better stuff? Or what do you think the reason behind that is? A couple of different things. Uh, one is our location. We're quite safe. We're not in a built up area. Yeah. We're quite easy to access. Um, you don't get trapped in here like you would be in a supermarket. So people have felt quite safe. But we've kept people safe in a one way system. Um, but also, um, and sorry, repeat the end of that question. I mean, Richard. just sort of thinking. You know, why do you think the, you've done so well? Because you know, sometimes you think, oh, these businesses might have really suffered, but you, you've, you're reporting the other way. Do you think it's because people would rather buy better products in the time they've got, you know, nothing else to spend your money on, if you like? Possibly, or... possibly there's that element of nothing else to spend your money mm. on and people wanting good quality and food. Something nice, yeah. Time. But also, probably 25%, a third of 
people's uh, food budget would go on eating out and they've had to eat in. Yeah. They've had to cook all that's of their true. meals, uh, yeah. breakfast, dinner and tea. And that's quite a lot of food if you're not used to cooking and you're used it to eating is. out. And so people have wanted good food yeah. if they're going to do that. And we like to pride ourselves in helping people to buy economically. Um, mm. So to buy a cheaper cut mm. and, and try a cheaper cut, try, it, try cooking it differently or to buy in bulk and spread the cost of something. So as such, the cost of our, our meat then becomes comparable to supermarkets right. and it's not yeah. way above as everybody would expect. Brilliant. Well, on that note, I'm going to get over to your meat counter and we're going to get us some steak for Make It Meat Monday. <laughs> but uh, Simon, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. All right, cheers. Um, Oh, I'm just back going home now with my steaks. But um, that was cracking. I really enjoyed that. That is a really well-run farm shop and you should really go in there if you can um, after COVID lockdown and just have a visit and come up here for a cup of tea, have a slice of cake. Look at Farmer P's farm over there. Look at mine down there. <laughs> you can't really see it. But um, just, you know, support these independent producers, you know, because they... Uh, they are uh, really worth uh, keeping going, I think. Right, I'm trying to struggle to find my car keys. I've got me here somewhere. Uh, oh, <laughs> look at this. I left my car in lock with the keys in the car. <laughs> right, anyway, let's get going. See you later.